Hello, people. Welcome to the United Way. My name is Rob Dukan, the presenter of this show. In this video, we're we'll talking about the top four, the potential top four clubs for season 2022 2023. I did post a video telling you guys we need, we really need a team depth, depth. because if we don't have a, a squad depth, like a team, squad, call it whatever English depth we will be very difficult for us to maintain the challenges that we have we have league cup cup uh, the queen's cup premier league europa league and whatever that may come across in the season yeah i talked about zayak uh, united looking at zayak uh, as an option if anthony doesn't come in and i heard some of you writing that oh rob i i mean you're deluded why should you zayak is i mean anthony is better than zayak that's not the point the point is we're trying to get a team a team is not only the top stars we have lost five quality players in popga well um, i mean mata and mati we have lost um i mean you can name you can name a lot of them even linga these players are more or less good players they might not fit last season but they are good players and we have to replace them with quality we can't replace all these players just with the youth players you see my point. That's why I was talking a little bit about Sesco, thinking about he's young. He's a player for two more years. He has to get an experience in order to start hitting the ground. But uh, yeah, guys, before we start, please make sure you smash the like on the video because we will be doing this every time. I want you guys to take part in, this vid in these videos and in the channel because the channel is yours, not mine. I do these videos for you guys. And guys, I just want you to get answer the question before we continue. Who are your top four team? Who are your top four team? Which teams will make your top four? Would United slide in that top four? Are we going to, are we going to um, go two years without the Champions League? Uh, personally, I think no. I think we will not. But and I'm going to tell you guys why. Uh, um, and uh, yes, I'm. Uh, let me just go straight into it. Why? I mean, I, I saw an article right uh, on uh, one of these journals that's uh, fair. Um, uh, Ferdinand, uh, Ferdinand, who played for uh, Manchester United, Roy Ferdinand. You guys know him. It's uh, here is it. Uh, here is the picture. Actually, you can see his uh, top four teams uh, for next season. And I, I, I kind of said yes. I, I don't agree with Ferdinand, Roy Ferdinand, the defender in, in everything. But I think, I think the fact that he took Manchester United inside the top four, you might say, oh, right, because you're a fan, that's why you think they can. We don't have a good team, but. We are going to make some signings. They might not be the hot cake that you everybody wants, but we are going to make some signings. Manchester will bring it to uh, uh, at, at most three players, at most three more players into the into the team. Then, if you look back um, the season, right, you will see the biggest problem we had in Manchester United was not even actually the players. The biggest problem that we had was discipline. That is why I will tell you guys here that. The best thing that has happened for Manchester United was for us not to bring Pochettino as a manager. Was for us to bring Terry T Eric Tenag, give Terry Harry, uh, Eric Tenag as the manager of Manchester United. By the way, smash a like on the video if you are happy to see any uh, Eric Tenag imposing his system, not only of play, but his disciplinary system in Manchester United. Because this is the only way we can go forward. I don't see United going forward with, ha with having spoiled players. I don't see United going forward with having players who put themselves from um, front before before the, the team. I repeat again for you guys, if you're, if you're new on this channel, I mean, most of you watch these videos, you know what you know this already. There was a time when they were talking about Eric Ten Hag or Pochettino coming to Manchester United as manager. It pulled on, pulled on, pulled on with, with Eric Ten Hag. Did you know why? The main reason why Eric Ten Hag did not jump in because United wanted Ten Hag. They loved his playing style. Eric Ten Hag wanted to get more power in the, in the team. If it was a different manager, right, coaching Manchester United this period of time, they would have bought any player and brought in Manchester United. If you have noticed, the club is bringing players that Eric Ten Hag gives his blessing. So Manchester United will not just bring a player to play for Manchester United because, because the player is free. Eric Ten Hag will not accept that. So you can blame him for De Jong not coming. You can blame him for bringing such a player. You can blame him from the market. It's, it, all those are, are genuine blames, but, but gen, genuine, genuine points. But um, um, at the end of the day, he is the one that will give a go if a player coming out, is coming to Manchester United uh, or not. I can't pronounce words very well. I have issue here on my throat. I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, I got to sort through that one. But yeah, so let's go straight to the to the point here. Yeah. So we're on the fifth minute. I haven't even go with the players with the team. 
So for me, my my first um, top four teams among these because I think these these teams, Manchester City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Manchester United, Chelsea, and and uh, and um, Arsenal will be the top six for next season. I think they will still be. I think West Ham is trying to jump into it. Uh, West Ham has done gone, done good business. They are trying to uh, build up a team that can be influential. I think Aston Villa is behind their pushing. Yeah, yeah, Bright, um, Brighton will be the, uh, you know, the white horse. There will be, uh, I mean, between the between the feet, the feet and the and the and the tenth position. But uh, my my prediction is this: I think City is going to win a tight season this year. I think Manchester City is going to win the league. Why? Because they have this team deep, deep um, bread. They have this team. Uh, what I'm I'm talking about depth. They have a very massive team, which uh, they can pull on for long. They have a good manager. That's my first position. I'll give it to Manchester to Manchester City. I think they're going to win the league, but it will be a tight one with them and um, Liverpool as usual. Uh, but I um and I agree with Refenida on this one. But uh, to coming back to the, uh, the second position, obviously I'll give Liverpool. I think it's a team that club has built for a long time now. The team is very mature. They understand the Premier League. They have the system. They understand the way to club, club wants them to play. They are very experienced, both in Europe and also in the, the Premier League. So I am sure that they will give a hard time. I think the difficult the difference between City and uh, and and Liverpool is that City just have more depth and they have a, a slightly uh, uh, experienced team. They just have a complete package. I think it will be a disaster if City doesn't win the league. So I will go for Manchester for Liverpool as a second, but it will be a very tight race. I think. I mean, I would the third. The third in this list will not be. My my view is the third will still be a way, way uh, from uh, from the second. Which means, in terms of point, if the if the second has seventy point, the third can win with like sixty point. It will not be a close race between the third and for and the second. And the third will be Manchester United. And I want to tell you guys. You guys might think I'm crazy. Why is he talking about Manchester United? We haven't bought. All these players, you know, the third will be Manchester United because I think we, the biggest thing, as I said, has happened to United this season is bringing up a manager that has a playing style, that has a, t a way he wants the team to play. And uh, that will impose discipline on Manchester United and the discipline will make a huge difference. I think United, under very difficult circumstances, will be the third this season. It might be way behind the second in terms of points, but I think we will, we will just nick it at the third position this season. I think we don't have the depth, but we will do that. I think if United is doing a little bit well during the World Cup and after the World Cup, that break, United is going to invest at least two players, bring them more. Because the Glazers, one thing the Glazers know is that Champions League is something that they, if their club, if Manchester United loses Champions League two years in a row, we will lose a lot of advertisement value. We will lose a lot of value in the, in the world market. There are a lot of clubs. Like I said in my previous videos that Manchester United is a great club but has a, a, a bad team, if I'm making sense. So I think United will be third. Uh, and uh, below me, United, I think, is going to be Chelsea. And I'll tell you why. Chelsea has, they're doing a very good building. They might stick the, the young beyond, uh, below our nose. Um, uh, and uh, they, they have a good manager in general. Uh, Chelsea has uh, more experience than, than I would even say uh, Manchester United at this point in terms of uh, as a team because they have most of their players sustained. But uh, um, but I think Chelsea is um, um, Chelsea is uh, no matter how you say it, they've lost their president, have new managers. Uh, Abramovich is not, not there, but they have a very ambitious owner. It's not like Manchester United where they are just, you know, Playing with the fans, don't not worry about the reaction of the fans. Those who who actually finance the the game, so I think uh, Chelsea is going to be third. Uh, I think it will be a very hard. It will be a very unfair. Uh, I mean, Chelsea is going to be fourth. Sorry, it will be an unfair fourth because I think it will be very slight. Uh, I, I think United will be third in front of Chelsea. It could be the difference, maybe 1.2, not more than three points difference. It will be a slight one because the season is long. And one of the reasons why I think they will be third is because as they are building a team, I have an impression that the ability, they are, as they are building a team with a lot of new players bringing in, it will be very hard for them to concentrate on both Champions League and uh, also on, uh, on domestic competition. But they will just be about... 
They might be third, but I put them on the on the fourth position. That's what I'm trying to say. So going back on the four on the, on the fifth position, I think um, um, Arsenal will be fifth this season. Arsenal will be fit in my, my view. I mean, we'll come back in a year's time and look at this video. Arsenal will be fit. I think Arsenal have built a very good team there in terms of football style. The way they play football, very uh, uh, lovely to watch, to be honest. But I don't still still. I think they lack that experience. They have been out of the Champions League for a long time. They have been out of the big tournaments for a long time. That makes them... Uh, a little bit vulnerable in keeping on um, the momentum for a long time that is my my point guys and uh, that's what i think and i i've watched arsenal i think they are just like a baby boom very excited they they will at some point of the league they will be very attractive and they will die down when they start losing games and pick up a game so arsenal i think arsenal will be fit this is a very serious um year for for uh, the manager because the manager i'm worried if he doesn't do well this year he might lose his job if he doesn't go into the top four because they have invested big time and uh the seeds which is the last because it's a top six uh, um, a video top four but we'll talk about the six teams the seat will be Tottenham Hotspur why because I think Tottenham Hotspur yes they have Conte they have a good team they have done a lot of recruitment bringing a lot mostly foreign players who have not adapted to the Premier League I think they'll be solid in the defense they'll be a hard team to beat but they are Tottenham Hotspur they are playing in the, in the toughest league in the world I think the fact that they qualified for Champions League will hinder their chances for, to qualify for next Champions League. You see what I mean? So uh, when the Champions League kicks off, uh, they, will be, they will have to, you know, they, they, will, they, 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 they are not that experienced team in Champions League. I know the, fans, the, the, the sports fans will be angry with me, but that is my view. So I think sports, sports will be the seat next year. So guys, this is a short video. Tell me who is going to be your top four. Is Manchester United going to make it? Is sports going to be out of it? Is Chelsea and or is Arsenal going to be the surprise? I mean, the White Horse in the top four and Manchester United out. Personally, I think Manchester United will be in the top four. And my prediction is that they will be in the top three. That will be the third position. I might be deluded, but we'll see when the season starts. Again, I want to close the video with this bad news that Anthony Marshall will be out of the Brighton game. So Cristiano Ronaldo might have some hours there. This is, this is the problem. This is what we are talking about, having team death. Manchester United need to register players that are ready. We, we, we cannot do anything in the league if we just have young and inexperienced players. So guys, I would like to hear what you say below. Drop your comments below. Guys, subscribe. Check our Instagram, po um, Instagram, Twitter. Subscribe in all of them so that we can be friends forever. Talk to you soon, guys. Ciao. Ciao.